that to the day today and uh, for the day and, and able to just focus on musical stuff, which is much more what I'd rather be focusing on than that boring law crap. Oh yeah, and uh, how long have you been uh, playing music? I've been playing music since I was fourteen, and I did hit the ripe old age of sixty this year, so that'd be about forty five, forty six years on the guitar. That's incredible. That's more time than I can uh, fathom. I'm only 26. So. <laughs> well, you'd think I'd be better than I am by this time, but I, just, <laughs> I think I got to a certain place at about 40 or 45, and I've kind of leveled off. I haven't been learning a whole lot of chops. Uh, my boy Sam is, is a lot more advanced than I am, but I'll tell you more about him later. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely cover uh, Blue Avenue and uh, yeah, your, your sound, Sam's band, uh, uh, Pink on the second half. Um, so how many bands are you in uh, currently? You know, I'm up to five flavors of rock now. Um, we've been doing this ACDC tribute called Soul Stripper for about uh, close to 20 years. Uh, maybe about more like 16 or 17 years ago, we started a Zeppelin tribute called Led Zeppelin. And right around that same time, we started a classic rock band called Sub Vinyl Jukebox that still is going. In the last couple of years, we've, we've chosen two more flavors. And the most recent ones are... Sweet Child, the Guns N' Roses tribute, and lastly, Leonard Sinner, which is a Leonard Skinner tribute in which I'm actually singing and not playing a whole lot of guitar. We've got some great guitar players. So uh, in answer to your question, five flavors of rock. And I've only seen one of them, the uh, Soul Stripper, with uh, Johnny Rockstar plays in that band, too. How long have you known Johnny uh, Rockstar? You know, it's funny. I've known, I've known Johnny uh, probably close to 18, 20 years. Um, actually, the other co-founding member of Soul Stripper uh, introduced me to Johnny years ago. At that point, Johnny was doing a Ted Nugent tribute, uh, which I'm not sure if he still does anymore, but at one point, it was probably 10 or 12 years ago, he asked me to come out and be second guitar in his Nugent tribute, which was a lot of fun. I happen to know some Nugent t songs as well. So, you know, kind of helped him get through a Nugent show. I think he was down a player, so I was probably just subbing in for somebody, but uh, I've known I've known Johnny a long time, and then when the position came open in Soul Stripper, I said to myself, "Well, he's such a solid player. Uh, he has such a command of the guitar. He's great on stage. He would make a really great Malcolm." Um, now I'm just going to say I've had a lot of very overqualified Malcolms in Soul Stripper over the years. As you know, I'm an Angus Young, and Malcolm, while he, while Malcolm Young is sort of one of the uh, songwriting maybe one of the main songwriters in the band. And, I, and as I gather, does a lot of the business work in the band. What Malcolm does on stage is mostly bash out the chords and they've just got to be good, strong, clean power chords. Well, a lot of guitar players can do that. So it, it doesn't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to be the Malcolm in a uh, ACDC tribute. You just got to be a very good, solid player. And I've had some excellent players over the years in that role in Soul Stripper. So I'm going to mention some cats like Rob Fowler, who's been a Malcolm for me, who does uh, you know amazing work on the guitar band. Uh, Dan Benz has been a Malcolm for me. Uh, uh, gosh, there's there's been a number of them over the years. But uh, right now it is Johnny Rockstar, and he's doing an amazing job. And and so do you. Um, yeah, you really uh, play the part. Like <clears throat> you're you're on the floor, man. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've known Johnny about the same time because I went like my dad was friends with him. Uh, he's worked for uh, with Johnny for years in the stagehand union, so uh, I've like went bowling with him when I was young because he had his daughter too. So, um, oh, very cool. Yeah, and uh, whole world, right? Uh, Edmonds, yeah, shoreline area. It's great. So, well, are you originally from Seattle or wh where are you from? Well, no, I'm. I'm I was born in Boston. I spent my youth um, on the East Coast. Uh, my dad was a college professor, so he bounced around from a couple of different colleges back east, uh, notably uh, in Rochester, notably Amherst, and then wound up at Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut, eventually, where he finished his career and spent, oh gosh, probably 20 or 30 years. Uh, so I was an East Coast faculty brat, came out in 79 to go to the UW because my, my parents had met there and my, my dad had been out there to get his PhD, I guess it was. It's a great so school. Some roots out there and my mom is from washington so i came out in 79 and I've, I've been out here ever since wow and so how many shows have you uh like been to or uh like in, in would you say like in your life or 
Like you probably attend well, shows okay. too. Hey, uh, when I when I was about fourteen, I became obsessed with rock and roll. And on the East Coast, uh, as a youngster, I was able to get to quite a number of shows. I saw just a lot of really good bands: uh, the Cars, uh, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, the Grateful Dead. You know, a, a lot of really great shows that I saw back east before coming out. Now, once I got out here as a freshman at the UW. I got really serious about it. There was a lot of great concerts up in Seattle happening in 79, 80. I saw uh, Ted Nugent. I saw the outlaws. Uh, Incredible. Saw <laughs> a, a, whole, a whole ton of great, great shows in my time. Um, since then, you know, I've seen a lot of bands. I've seen the stones and the who, and uh, I missed the Zeppelin show. <laughs> I, I didn't see them, but I saw, uh, I've seen a lot of the greats. And uh, honestly, uh, my, my obsession with rock and roll has carried so far that, you know, any more in the last uh, 15, 20 years, all I want to do on the weekends is play shows if I can. And uh, you know, I try to keep it up. You know, even in the COVID times, we've come through continuing to just play out on weekends. So I mean, if you include my shows. Yeah, how many shows have you performed? My shows. <laughs> like uh, probably hundreds because you're playing every almost every weekend. So Exactly. It's probably hundreds and thousands by this time. If I'm not playing, I'm likely to be uh you know, have hosting a jam here at the house. So I'll be playing anyways, you know, so I just can't stop, can't stop rocking. Right. It's like, I mean, the recording shows or I'm editing shows or yeah, this just never stops. Like <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I mean, if by some chance I'm not playing or hosting a jam here at the house, I'm probably out uh, trying to, uh, you know, watch one of my son's shows or something. And again, we'll talk more about him. He's a real phenom on the guitar. That's Sam Comfort and Blue Avenue. And I want to get several shout outs to him, but you know, anymore, if I'm not devoting myself to my music, I'm trying to help the kids along and uh, do their stuff. So they're just amazing. Definitely. Uh, I love uh, recording like some indie bands and uh, or like debuts of bands that's going. And uh, uh, have you heard of uh, bootstrap uh, rehearsals? Like uh, I've been meeting some uh, bands there, too. That's good luck uh, practice space. So, you uh, know, I think I have heard about that. Is that up in, is that that up in Cape County? Yeah, it's uh, South Seattle. Yeah. Kind of by the stadiums. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, that sounds like a good place to be. Uh, you know, down here in, in Tacoma, we have uh, a place where I don't necessarily practice, but there's a studio, uh, a fellow named Shad has a studio on South Tacoma Way, and my boy has recorded there. Um, and, uh, you know, there are some there are some great practice spaces down here as well. I've been very blessed in that I happen to land on this acre in Puyallup that has a great big shed out back. So, you know, there's room for a drum kit and, you know, I've got six, seven guitars back there and uh, guitar amps back there. And we've got a PA. So as I mentioned, if I'm not playing out, I'm probably just jamming here with my friends and uh, we can put on a quite a show here at the house if we need to. Right. Uh, my dad is a Hawaii room, kind of a similar thing. It's just like a Hawaii themed, but we uh, jam out there too. Um, yeah. Great nice. to see to music scene in Tacoma. Uh, uh, Eric plays in a, a band as well uh, in Tacoma, right? You play. Yeah. We've got a really thriving scene down there. Yeah, like Plaid Pig, some great venues. Uh, Valley, uh, another Air great venue. Airport Tavern. Yeah. Um, I went to the Plaid Pig and saw some really great uh, punk rock and metal metal bands just a couple months ago. And yeah, we had a great time in there. I mean, they got a little bit slam dancing, and my girlfriend was a little bit like trepidatious, like, "Are they gonna are they gonna come slam over near us?" But I, I had a good time. Uh, you know, there, there was a pretty young crowd, pretty rowdy crowd, but by golly, it was a rocking night uh, at the Plaid Pig. So, yeah, shout out to those people. They're doing a great job in that venue for sure. And you, you've been playing at like some t uh, casinos too. Like, you're, weren't you at like uh, American Eagle or Eagles Casino or something? Yeah, I've been very, very fortunate to recently get a run of gigs at the Great American Casino. And uh, the man who's booking in there, I talked him into giving, his, giving me some shows for Soul Stripper and the Zeppelin Band as well as the classic rock, Skinnerd, and Guns N' Roses, so all flavors. We've been in there, and we're, we're pulling pretty well. We're, it's a big room, and we're trying to fill those seats, you know. So, But, yeah, right now I'm honored to say we're at the Great American Casino. I tend to play a lot at, oh, let's see, Stockton's in Maple Valley, Flotation Device out in Purdy, Gig Harbor. Uh, I used to play a lot at the Draft Choice, and he's going to start. Uh, that, that's in Maple Valley. Uh, sort of Auburn area. He's going to start booking again pretty quick. Uh, where else do I play? We get we get around Coco Joe's in Algona Pacific. Yeah, that's where I first uh, saw you guys. Yeah, Coco Joe's. Um, 
Coco Joe's, yeah, Bethel Saloon over in uh, Port Orchard is good. Casey's up in Kent is hiring right now. All you bands out there. Uh, the Red Dog in Maple Valley is, is hiring bands. Brother Don's in Bremerton. I'm looking at my schedule now, so I'm cheating. Oh, Brother so Don's, yeah, I've seen some shows out there. Yeah, I'll take a ferry, go uh, see some shows across the water. Brother Don's has a particularly nice set of staffers and, and owners out there. They do a great job. So that's a smattering of the rooms that we're in. I uh, count myself fortunate to be kind of coming through these COVID times with intact membership, intact shows, um, and, and some rooms that I can still book. And of course we did lose some, some rooms during these, this pandemic. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, we've lost some, some players, we've lost some rooms, but we're just keeping on, keeping on. We can't stop. All right. Yeah. Tim's Tavern. Yeah. That was too bad losing that in Northgate, but, um, have you ever gone up to like a canoes cabaret at like Tulalip, or like the see a show or it seems to me I had one show at the Tulalip casino and it was about 16 years ago. And I got to do ACDC there and Zeppelin. They hired both bands. And I, for whatever reason, I've not been back to that casino, but we have played uh, soul strippers been in the red wind once or twice. We've been out to the seven seaters casino out in the uh, squim. So we've had some, you know, smattering of, of casino jobs here and there. I always love that. Cause of course they pay well. And uh, it's a nice, clean environment, and they kind of tend to treat you like like a rock star. In some of these well, as a, uh, tomorrow there's Randy Linder, a tribute to uh, CCR playing uh, 9 p.m. February 11th at Quilcita Creek Casino. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to catch now, that show. Cat, there's a cat who's been doing it for a long time, very successfully. I know Randy does that. I think he, yeah, uh, he does a credence thing. I think he does a number of tributes and uh, he's been doing it for a long time. Shout out to Randy Linder. He, he's a very successful man. Uh, have you uh, ever seen a Randy Hansen? Randy Hansen is a, is a personal friend of mine and I am going to, I could just go on and on about, I'll tell you a quick Randy Hansen story. Uh, first time I got to open for him was at the Cedarwood dome in Fife, which no longer exists. And it was a big, geodesic wooden dome and it had a second floor and we were playing up on the second floor stage there's no elevator so i had to lug my big marshall it was actually a marshall stack it was a full stack a one piece full stack that i was using at that time and oh, those I are heavy i know i'm a stagehand those things are yeah well, not <laughs> light hugely heavy and i lugged it up these long stairs and there's this guy up on stage and he's got lo and behold two Marshall full stack exactly like mine except his grill cloth covers were in better shape than mine and and he's arranging his stuff on the floor he's got his fuzz face he's got all these devices and of course it's Randy Hanson so I got to talking to him and at that time you know, I was coming along as a guitar player I knew how to play some Hendrix stuff I'd never seen Randy play before so I had the temerity I had the balls to say well geez Randy if you need a rhythm guitar player for a couple songs you know I'd help, be glad to help you he kind of laughed and blew it off we went on talking and so we do our ACDC thing. We played our hour and a half to open for Randy. And I got to watch him come up on stage for my first time to watch him play. And I swear, Devin, I almost want to just go crawl under a rock or hang my head because that man can out Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix. And I was just so blown away by him. And I really am blown away every time I see him play. Uh, he just has it down. And he is an amazing person and a very mellow and gracious soul. So uh, I like I said, I could go on and on about Randy. I've only seen I him twice, but it was amazing uh, each time. Yeah, I, I can't wait to if he has any shows in the area. I'm gonna definitely uh, make it out to see him again. We've had well, him on I'll the, what, the he, show too, he, the radio show. <laughs> he's he's so great, and just to watch him play for a guitar player like me. I mean, I learn every time I you know, watch Randy for a couple of seconds. So I've had the honor of opening for him a number of times over the over the career. You know probably opened it for him five, six, seven times. And uh, he's always just very warm, humble human being. So I can't say enough about him. Definitely. Um, so uh, who are some of your like musical inspirations for uh, like for the music you play? Well, uh, they are myriad and they are diverse and they run the gamut mostly of the standard classic, classic rock sort of icons. You talk about Randy Hansen and Jimi Hendrix, for sure a big influence. Uh, Eric Clapton, you know, ACDC, The Doors, Eagles, Pink Floyd, Hat, Grateful Dead, Pink Floyd, Zeppelin, Stones, who, you know, these are these are my icons. These are my meat and potatoes. And I, I love playing as much of that classic rock music as I can. Uh, I've tried to stay updated and, 
you know, you try to learn some newer stuff. I mean, there was a time when I thought I was pretty new and hip to be learning Green Day songs. Of course, that's, you know, now not not exactly current. You know? Well, I, I got to work a like, Green Day show last year. I was, I was on stage with Green, Green Day, and yeah, they're, they're cool people. Uh, did but, you go to that? Wow, that's I, I worked the st- show. show with uh, I, I, yeah. the show with Blink One Eighty Two and Weezer. Uh, it was it was uh, not Blink One Eighty Two, but it was, it was Weezer and Fall Out Boy and uh, and that's Green Day. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, I, I built I that yeah, show partly. There. So <laughs> I was that that's the one I was at too. That was a great show. And much as I like Fall Out Boy, and I thought they were great, and much as Weezer uh, kicked ass, you know. Green Day just comes out and cleans up. I mean, wow, just the power. Uh, so I really love Green Day, and that's been a kind of a more modern influence than some of the uh, some of the earlier stuff. But um, yeah, we we try to throw down some Green Day, me and my kids and others, and uh, that's always a lot of fun. So I mean, the influences I could name and answer your question, Dev, they're just so diverse. But uh, I was in a Grateful Dead band early in my life. Um, and uh, Almond Brothers certainly is something that I revere. Uh, Boston, I mean, I just the, the list just goes on and on and on. I love it all, honestly. Uh, do you know uh, Andy Coban? Uh, uh, he does a great Grateful Dead uh, cover. Who's that? Andy Coban. He, he plays at the. I don't uh, think I do know. Blue I Moon every Monday, and yeah, Nectar Lounge. Oh. And, uh, hmm. more, more Seattle. Um, okay. So uh, are well, I've you... been down to Portland. I saw some Grateful Dead cover bands down in Portland, and I don't know if I can remember the names of them, but there was, oh man, there's a couple of them down there that are very, very good. Uh, and that's a direction that I sort of almost went, but wound up again starting, you know, an ACDC tribute, a Zeppelin tribute, and, and not doing the Dead thing. But I like to get on the Jerry Garcia and just try to, you know, recreate some of those Jerry type solos. That's, you know, usually pretty fun, fairly easy stuff. And uh, there's nothing like good old Grateful Dead. I'd love to see you uh, play that. Yeah, on on your uh, your future shows coming up. Um, how many instruments do you play? You mostly just lead guitar or uh, anything else? Yeah, I, I I'm mostly a guitar player. I do play a little bass. I play a little keyboards. Uh, I I blow harmonica at some of our shows. You know, if, when when there's a solo. Uh, what else? That's that's mostly it. I mean, I am a singer now in that. With the new uh, the new Skinnerd band, I'm actually doing vocals, so I'm the lead singer. So I'm having to start to learn to protect my voice. So that's my newest instrument. I mean, I've always sang a few songs at maybe our classic rock shows, but I've also always leaned on singers who have kind of a high range who can do little ACDC, little Zeppelin, little Scorpions, or whatever. For me, that ain't going to happen. But I could get through a night of doing Skinnerd and other classic rock. So. What, what Leonard Sinner does is actually we do two 45 minutes of, of Skinner. And in the last set, we just kind of open up and we let some of our other singers sing. I, I guess we got, uh, who's in that band? Kenny Wood on the guitar. And he'll sing a few songs in the last set just to mess around. And, uh, you know, same thing with our, uh, with our bass player, Chris Heidel. We might have him sing a song. So the, our third set is much more open-ended and free form once we've gotten through the the serious meat and potatoes, which of course is doing the, the tribute to skin. And uh, also, I guess you have some uh, original music as well. Uh, you've recorded like, uh, like in the early two thousands, maybe late nineties. Or... I'll tell you my friend back in the day, probably, probably from the, through the nineties and into the two thousands. Yeah. I used to get after the originals. I used to write a ton of songs, used to record them, used to spend a lot of time in my basement recording. Um, never really got a recording contract, never was really like a recording artist out there, you know, uh, selling albums, but yeah, I've got a ton of originals and I just don't play them all that much unless, you know, it's for sort of close family or friends, because I've learned that over, uh, overall, say you're standing in a club, uh, the girls on the dance floor want to hear pour some sugar on me more than they want to hear my original song. I mean, just the way it is. Yeah. So I learned to play Pour Some Sugar on Me, you know? <laughs> uh, well, ori- so many, like, original songs, I bet you, lying around in this country on, like, scratch CDs and, and mixtapes that are warped that never got converted to digital. But um, it's like it's, it's a, finding those and, and, and getting them online would be great sometime. <laughs> well. and, and at some point in my at some point in my time, I should probably go back through all of my original material and sort of call a... Uh, Howard Comfort's greatest 
greatest songs disc and maybe release it or something and see if there's much interest in it. You never know. That could happen. I am just so involved in, in the, uh, the covers and the classic rock. And then again, you know, helping my son, uh, and my boys, particularly Sam, who, again, we're going to talk about him maybe a little bit later, but I'll touch on Sam just for a second. Again, with Lou Avenue, they are producing songs of a higher caliber than I think I was ever able to write. And that might be because Sam is partnering with a young woman named Princess Ginto uh, in Blue Avenue. She's the co-founder, co-fronter of that band. She's kind of the, the lead the lead front girl. And she writes the songs with Sam. Well, the thing about Blue Avenue is that they have these great songs. They have this great presence. They're much younger and better looking than I am. And so I'm happy to, I mean, if you were to go to play anything during this broadcast, for example, you won't find much of my stuff out there, but you probably will find some Blue Avenue stuff on YouTube. I think the song Sam told me to tell you was like closer to the sun. Or yeah, that's his most recent song. Yeah, I looked up his channel and uh, yeah, uh, great music video quality uh, as, a, as a video guy. It's like that. They did a great job with the music videos and the songs are, are quality too, top notch. So they yeah. are and, and the recording as well. And I mentioned that studio down in Tacoma that that guy Shad has. Uh, they spent a great deal of time in there. I remember when they were a little younger, they were like literally uh, cleaning floors and doing bake sales to raise the money to, to record in a really good quality studio. Uh, so they've developed a relationship with Shad and uh, shout out to him because it, he's a very fine recording engineer and he has an excellent uh, facility down there on South Tacoma Way. So yeah, I can't say enough about about Sam. And for any of you listeners out there who do want to hear some quality uh, new rock, uh, performed by some younger up and coming artists. Why I strongly recommend Blue Avenue. Uh, they are producing some some fine stuff. And now I, I'll I'll bring it back around here. I'll circle the wagons to say that Princess Ginto is now singing also in Sub Vinyl Jukebox. She has an amazing voice. She's only nineteen, so we kind of have to sneak her into the clubs, you know. But uh, she has just this incredible voice, and she can sing the heart. Uh, my gal Renee Perez who also sings in sub vinyl uh, is an amazing singer, but she doesn't have that high range to sing like Ann Wilson. Well, that's no problem for, for uh, princess. So between Renee and princess and my bass player, Kenny Wood, who's in sub vinyl, we've got some great, great vocals in that band and we can go out and knock out just about anything as far as classic rock. Um, and so we, we really enjoy that. That sounds like a lot. That's a ton of fun. Uh, what age did you start teaching uh, your son music? Or, uh, my boys were about one and three or two and four when I, when I thrust little guitars or mandolins into their hands or little, you know, uh, you know, some kind of little stringed instruments. Now, simultaneously, they did get going on kind of Suzuki method violin at about the age of five or six. So I wanted them to have some of the same upbringing and training that I had. I was more or less made to play violin by my mother from age six to 14 or so. Uh, the different experience that my kids had was that same thing. They were they were asked to do the Suzuki method for as long as they could tough it out, which is probably four or five, six years. But simultaneously, I was also schooling them on the, the guitar uh, right straight along so that they wouldn't have any shortcomings. And I think that may have made a difference. Um, I always get to blame my mom that I was kind of a late bloomer on the guitar because I really didn't even have one until I was 14 or 15. And I, I think if you're going to be a guitar player nowadays, you probably need to get one when you're about five or six. Totally. So. Yeah. My parents, uh, yeah, everyone should learn a little guitar and then, yeah, you pull out like a, a micro guitar, like, uh, yeah. Uh, very young age, uh, play, playing music, uh, pre pretty much daily, um, around my parents' house. So, and piano and keyboards, uh, forced to Sounds do like lessons. You were raised in a very cool house, Devin. <laughs> right. It was a mini zoo. We had lots of uh, pets. You have any pets as well or? You know, I wish we were on video. I would show you our little Siamese cat whose name is Bon Scott. I did a, a live stream interview yesterday with a woman named Joanne Lazarette. And uh, the uh, her Facebook site is called Matured Musician. So I think it's on that. And then my buddy Donald Malador also recorded it and live streamed it uh, on his uh, page. So you can watch me. You can watch me for an hour on that one. And I was able to display the cat around, which was really cool. So. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a funny name for the cat too. Uh, have you uh, seen the uh, Beatles Get Back documentary yet? Uh, 
the uh, from- I've watched a couple hours of it. I need to watch all of it. It's it's pretty addictive. It's great. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, it's a really good uh, documentary. So, uh, and you've seen Spinal Tap, of course. Oh man, I, I could probably quote you almost chapter and verse of Spinal Tap. You know, don't don't even look at it because it, it's not to be played, right? <laughs> don't look at it. But this one goes to eleven, right? Yeah, we we have a lot of fun with with Spinal Tap around here. I feel uh, we can make like a Spinal Tap sequel and uh, 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 turn it up to twelve. That's the that's this it. one goes to twelve. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, and have like Seattle area bands. Uh, I love it. So that that <laughs> man, if I ever had production level money, that would be great. Um, well, you uh, know, I think they did a sequel, and it wasn't quite quite Spinal Tap. It was like they called it a Mighty Wind. Which is, you know, kind of. Oh yeah, I've show. seen a mighty win. It's it's good time too. <laughs> I don't think it was good, but I think a lot of people felt like it wasn't quite the sequel they were expecting or something, you know. But uh, but no, that's good stuff. I nothing but nothing but uh, mad props for uh, for the guys in Spinal Tap. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm being told we have to take a quick break. Um, can we uh, go uh, to break with uh, some of Blue Avenue's music? Uh, Please uh, take them out with Blue Avenue. Uh, Sam Sam says to play that. Closer to the Sun, or whatever that one's called, off their new album. I know it's good. I've heard it a number of times. It, uh, it would be a great break, break uh, outro. Yeah, um, yeah, it came out like four months ago, and yeah, it's got it's got some uh, quite a few views. So that's fantastic. Sweet. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna head head out soon. But um, you know, when we get back, we're gonna have some more uh, Howard Comfort and. Uh, Definitely stay tuned to KKNW. And uh, if you haven't joined the uh, Viva ENT uh, Talk Rock and Soul uh, Facebook group, please do it today. Right on, man. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here. I'll just sit tight and wait through the commercial break and uh, uh, having fun talking with you, Devin. I'll be right here. Fantastic. There's a first time. Do I take it or leave it? It's up to me. Maybe just one time or two times is counting. What's there to lose? All right, we are back on Viva ENT, Rock, Pop, and Soul. I'm your host today, uh, Devin the Dude, filling in for Johnny the Capo. We've got uh, Howard Comfort on the line and uh, Eric the producer in the studio. Um, all right, um, we're talking about Blue Avenue, uh, Sam Comfort's uh, band. Um, with how, uh, yeah, and the thing, the thing that, that's so interesting that I think the listeners might get a kick out is this. Blue Avenue will continue to exist, although these kids are now college age. And in fact, my boy, Sam Comfort, has gone off to Belmont College in Nashville. He's trying to, you know, pursue his musical dream in Nashville and meet some players and get connected with some, you know, some some folks down there. And whereas Princess, the other more or less principal uh, songwriter in Blue Avenue, she's going to be going off to Berkeley College I think that's, uh, you know, College of Music, what that San Francisco or, or L.A., somewhere down in, in California. She's going off in, in the next next fall. So this year she's been around. That's why she was available for me to snatch her up and see if it was OK for her to sing some classic rock for us. And that's just been really magical because she's already been family. She's been over here so many times. You know, the kids have practiced in my shop as well as other other places. And we knew her so well. She'd already actually. I had appeared for Blue Avenue. I think we had already already got her up on stage for Sub Vinyl before. And then when Sam comes back on break, as he just was, you know, he played at like four or five Sub Vinyl shows along with me and Princess. You know, I'd either hand him the guitar or we'd go on extra guitar. And so that's just a joy. And I'll shut up about Sam soon, but I'm going to just say this. The kid learned some chops that I will never be able to learn because I don't have this kind of finger positioning and musical theory and stuff. So he's much better trained on the guitar than I am. And that's why his playing shows it. I mean, he can do that 
kind of Satriani or Eric Johnson kind of playing that's a little challenging for me. So you get the idea about Sam and Princess. They're and just he, amazing kids. And he's going to yeah, Nashville, which uh, that's the uh, heart of a lot of music in this country. So he'll learn a lot right. at Belmont. He, he's trying to, you know what degree he's trying to get or like a music degree? Well, or? yeah, he's working on music and business. And he kind of has a business plan. It's a little diffuse right now. I don't. I think he's got to narrow it down because right now Sam wants to come to the Northwest and start up a big like music world where you can record and get lessons and maybe have a performance space. And he's so his business plan is very uh, diffuse. I think he's going to have to consolidate a little bit. But obviously he has big dreams and a lot of ideas. And um, yeah, so but I think he's he's lighting it up in Belmont. In fact, he's uh. He's got a couple bands that he's he's working with down there already. Well, uh, man, I'd like to collaborate with that uh, when he comes back before he, he's on stage at Climate Pledge Arena. Um, have you have you been to the new arena yet? Uh, seen any shows? No. Which arena is that, Devin? You know the Key Arena, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's the Climate Pledge Arena. It's revamped, remodeled. They put a billion dollars into it, and it looks nothing like the Key Arena. It's really nice. I did not. I'm so out of the loop, I guess, down here. I didn't even know any of that. That uh, that key arena, I remember, that's that's the place where I saw some of those shows back in 79, 80, 81. Wasn't the Coliseum back in the day the, before key arena? What? It wasn't like the Coliseum? The, it was either the Coliseum or the arena or both. I want to say there was two was it two separate venues or was it all one? It all blends together a little bit. I know there was both a key center arena and a key center Seattle Coliseum. I I know I've been in both. I know I've seen concerts in both. The question is, is it all one venue? And I don't know. Well, I recommend it. I saw Joe Coy there a few weeks ago, and uh, yeah, I've, I've seen three shows there now, and it's a good time. Um, Sounds excellent. Sounds excellent. Well, I got to get out and get some get, see some national shows. The most recent big show I guess I saw was the Black Crows at the White River Amphitheater. That's a good show. Uh, that was just couple three months ago i had never been to the white river uh amphitheater and i was very impressed that's a nice nice venue and uh the black crows certainly put on a hell of a show and yeah that's where a pain in the grass pl plays and yeah that's a, that's a good spot um uh, seen a couple shows out there um so were you out uh, in seattle in the 90s like we've been talking uh through the years we're up to 1994 uh, uh on our chronological order of the top hits uh what was that like being here with the grunge scene? Like, absolutely amazing. Now, by that time, I had actually moved down to Tacoma from Seattle in '86 to go to law school, and I went to law school at a place called University of Puget Sound School of Law, which has since been sold to Seattle University. So UPS doesn't have a law school, but I moved down here at that time to go to law school, uh, and so I was a little bit. Uh, immersed in my studies between 86 and 89 i did have to work pretty hard on studying law and reading the law for those three years of course i was playing guitar and always learning and playing and, and jamming with friends but those three years between 86 and 89 i was a little cloistered away getting into the law got my law degree in 89 and then i would say my first few years between you know 91 and 92 or 93 were a little bit uh, bent towards trying to establish some kind of a professional presence as an attorney. Again, playing all the time, but I did have to put a fair amount of effort into that. Now, you started getting into 94, 95, 96. I was probably getting a little bit more comfortable as a young attorney, maybe able to start growing my hair a little bit longer, playing a little bit more music, not spending as much time at the office. And uh, trust me, that's been my, my bent ever since is growing the hair longer and not spending as much time at the office. I hope my clients aren't listening because we get, we get our, we get it done with our family law that we do, but man, I am all about the music and about three or four in the afternoon. I just want to go home and play or rest up for my show. You know, definitely. Um, <laughs> I'm growing out my hair too. Uh, going to grow it long. Like the eighties. <laughs> Let your freak flag fly, buddy. Uh, there's a uh, SH80 at Canoes Cabaret uh, this Friday as well. It's, they play all 80s. It's a it's a free show uh, on the uh, the 11th here. Um, oh, yeah, wow. Valentine's Day is coming up the, the, this week as well. So uh, got big oh, plans. Oh my God! Well, you know it's coming up too quickly. I guess the next show I've got is probably on on the 18th of February doing Zeppelin at the Bethel. 
The next night on the 19th, I'm clear out at HD's in Belfair doing uh, Guns N' Roses. So we're all over the place. Well, I'll it's try to make to both those shows. That, and, uh, What's that? I'll try to record both those shows. It'll come out with my oh, uh, camera that, rig. And uh, you're very, you're very kind to, to offer that. Um, it's hard for me to get out and see as many of my contemporaries and colleagues as I would like uh, because I am playing all the time. But I will give a shout out to a band here in Tacoma. Talking about the Tacoma scene, the band is called Rocket. Uh, they, I'm not in that band. Uh, the principal players in that band are Kenny Wood on guitar and Tim Hatch on vocals, uh, and, and both of them just just tear it up. And they're a four piece. They've got a bass player named Jeremy and a drummer that I've worked with extensively named Doug McNeely is their drummer. So it's a four piece. They all know their way around their instruments and they just do amazing stuff like virtuoso classic rock and and some of the obscure classic rock that nobody else does so shout out to rocket i have been out to see them a couple times they're amazing i have to find um, them on uh, facebook fo and follow them too uh, yeah if you get a chance to see rocket it, it'd be it'd be well worth it i'm going to give a further quick shout out uh, there's going to be some jams starting on some saturday night at a place called Rumors in uh, Tacoma. Oh, yeah, Spanaway yeah. area. Yeah, Rumors, Inc. Yeah, Spanaway area, exactly. And my buddy Eric Asplin is going to be holding the reins on the jam. I think the first night that I'm going to be able to be over there because of my gig schedule is March 12th. I'm going to help him host. And then i got a couple more dates in, uh, in May on the 7th and 21st. I'll help him host. But, you know, as far as being a jam host for Eric Asplin, he just, he just needs a good drummer, one good drummer, and one good... Uh, guitar player and he's good to go you know wow uh we'll be doing that also talking about jams and rumors you may know that lynn Sorensen uh hosts a jam on wednesdays there have you heard about that one i haven't well, the, uh... well lynn Sorensen is kind of a big dog he used to play bass for bad company and uh he has access to some some local musicians uh real top shelf cats like uh manuel moraes uh, his drummer, Doug McGrew, is, you know, kind of top of the pops. And so I was asked to host uh, one of his one of his jams as a guitar player. Some of the other guitar players he's had in there have been Chad Quist, uh, Ronnie Lee. I mentioned Manuel Moraes. So some really elite players. So I was honored just to be asked to do a night with him. Uh, that was kind of a big deal for me. And I'm hoping they asked me back. Uh, but yeah, Lynn, Lynn's kind of, Lynn's kind of a big dog, like I said. <laughs> wow. Uh, and do you know a, a Guy Johnson band? Like, have you ever seen him? Or... That name is ringing, is ringing for me, but I'm not sure if I've seen them. What are they all about? Oh, they, he plays, uh, he can play pretty much any song. He's, he's a great tribute guy. And uh, he, he sometimes plays solo or uh, with, uh, he's got bass player and drummer. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, is he Seattle or Tacoma? Uh, he's more north, uh, but he comes down to Edmonds or he plays at Tulalip sometimes. So, um. okay, okay. Well, I will say, you know, I sometimes feel like I'm able to, to some extent, keep my finger on the pulse of the Pierce County scene. But I will admit that, you know, you get up into King County, so many great players, so many established bands, so much history, so many layers of just awesome musicianship. And you turn over another rock, and there's a there's another three amazing guitar players, you know. So Seattle, I, it's it, it is pretty awesome. But I almost feel sometimes overwhelmed by the amount of people and musicians up there. It's like what? Oh, sometimes there's so many shows, uh, like uh, on one night. It's like I got to pick one or two. It's like a put right. it like a like a roulette wheel out. Of like okay, <laughs> which one am I shooting tonight? Yeah, yeah. I uh, mean, down here in Pierce County, I almost feel like I'm a you know, somebody that, that, that people know about, but up in King County, you're not going to find a whole lot of people that really know who Howard Comfort is. Honestly, I got, I, mean, I guess I got a few fans up there, but, uh, you know, did you but ever, uh, County's kind of a manageable, it's kind of more of a manageable scene down here. Now what with COVID we lost some of the clubs. So there's even fewer venues to play. So it's like, well, man, we got to start rebuilding this scene here. So let's go. <laughs> I know. I'd love to uh, uh, build a venue myself. Like, that'd be great. And I'll have like the lessons thing, kind of like what your uh, son's plan is, too. Just have it all, all like a center for music. Uh, we, we need more of those. Um, well, you know what? That does sound pretty good. And when you think about it, uh, that is a very appealing prospect. Uh, and I, I hope that, uh, I hope those studios and projects 
with all of their different machinations come true for you and for my boy Sam, and I and I think they will. It just takes you know a hard work, a lot of drive, uh, a lot of connecting with a lot of people, and a lot of just uh, upbeat conversations. And Devin, I think you got it in you. You're very positive. Uh, forced to be reckoned with, and I, I know you could do it. Something like that sounds like it'd be right up your alley. And uh, definitely advocating for music in schools, too. We need more uh, integrated arts funding for uh, Seattle schools and really schools around the country, too. So, No question. No question. We need to feed the kids the, the tools to be able to make music at a you know, at a reasonable age so that they don't miss the boat on some of this stuff. Because, you know, sadly, if you haven't been taught some things you can get up to a certain age of maybe being a teenager and think to yourself, Oh, I could never do that because these other kids are so far ahead of me or something. And then people can wind up missing the boat. And that's, that's sad. So we do need to make sure that, you know, no child gets left behind, I guess you could say, and certainly musical instruction, not only that, but I'll just go on and say, um, you know, anytime that people are making music, it's a vibration that vibrates in their, in their souls and in their bones and in their selves and it's healing and it's healthful and it's necessary for growth. So I think we should all be teaching our kids music uh, probably every day. Yeah. It looks like uh, art decorates space, but music decorates time. So definitely uh, oh, stick with you. That's a good way to put it. Um, so uh, are you left-handed? I'm left-handed. Uh, or do you play right-handed? Um, I'm not. Uh, my boy Sam is a lefty. And I'm a righty, and that's the only thing that complicates, you know, me getting him up on stage. I would just hand him my guitar, which he actually could play a right-handed guitar, but he's much better on his lefty. So he usually brings out his Riggio. I'm going to give a shout-out to uh, Joey Riggio, who's a luthier in Tacoma who makes amazing instruments. I have not been able to afford to buy any for myself. I usually play PRSs or Gibsons, but Sam's got this cool Riggio. So he just straps that baby on, and I just hand him the lead in, and he either uh, – takes over for me or just supplements what we're doing. But no, I'm not a lefty. They say left-handed players are maybe the most brilliant of all. What do you think? Oh yeah. Like Randy Hansen, he plays like upside down and backwards. Uh, I mean, I, I play usually right-handed guitar, but yeah, I can either flip it over and play left-handed or just uh, left hand. I have a couple left-handed guitars too. But it's uh... Yeah. You're, you're definitely getting into a realm where it's starting to boggle my brain. I don't understand how you do it. I don't understand how Sam, my boy Sam does. It. I don't understand what, you know, Jimmy used to do, but it's, this is the magic and the mystery. So uh, are you a bigger uh, Elvis or Beatles fan? Uh, well, I am a huge Beatles fan. Uh, now, did you say... Uh, 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 would you say Elvis or, or Beatles? Oh, Elvis, Elvis. Yeah, uh, bigger, bigger Beatles than Elvis. Now, in my later career, I have discovered that I really, really do like Elvis more than I thought when I was a kid. Uh, I, I was raised on the Beatles and the Stones, uh, and they just have a devout worship for you know the classic rock pantheon. Elvis, as a, as a kid coming up, I knew I liked those rock songs, but I wasn't as into his slower love ballads. Now, as an adult um, and a more seasoned guy, I will I want to give another shout out here. There's a fellow by the name of Steve Unger, who's a friend of mine from he's from Pierce County. He plays bass with Metal Church. He's an international rock star. Of course, they're they're worldwide. Um, and he's kind of, you know, down here in Pierce County, it's, again, it's a little bit of a smaller pond. The big fish are Randy Hansen, yeah. Eve Unger, Jerry Miller, and a few others. Like Robert Cray. Uh, Ronnie or... Lee. There's a couple others. But the thing about, the thing about Steve Unger is that he also does an Elvis tribute, and it's called the Live 85. And the concept is they'll do some just standard Elvis stuff, but then they'll do a set of Elvis. If the King were still alive in the year 1985, what songs would he be doing? Well, I saw Steve on Facebook the other day singing bridge over troubled water, a la Elvis. And the tone was just so spectacular and his stage presence and, and the suits that he wears. So anyways, I'll shut up about Steve. That he sounds like a great time guy. though. Uh, that, uh, oh, great oh, combo. He's just so fun. Yeah. Everybody loves him down here. Uh, and and he's a world, he is a indeed a worldwide rock star, no question. And uh, do you know Danny Vernon? Uh, he does an Elvis tribute as well. I think I've heard of him. I, it sounds like I I should know him. I think he's been doing it for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Yeah, uh, we, we want to bring him on the show sometime. And uh, 
cool, cool, cool. I'd br- like to bring yeah, your I son on the show Daniel, too. <laughs> and I don't think I've seen his show. There are some great Elvis tributes out there. Again, I mentioned Steve having one. I know in Vegas there are a number of them that are really good. Uh, that's a very popular tribute, obviously. And uh, do, you, do you ever go up to like San Michelle Winery in uh, Woodenville? I've been up there once, and I don't even remember who I saw play. I know I saw some concert up there many years ago. Nice facility. Yeah, I work up there uh, uh, in the summers, and yeah, it's a great spot. Um, like uh, Mark Knopfler, and first concert I worked there was uh, John Fogarty. So great time. Man, oh man! Well, I'm a big I'm a big Dire Straits fan. I saw him. I saw Knopfler and Clapton side by side on stage in. I guess it was the Tacoma Dome, and I'm not sure if I know what year it was. It was probably the 90s. But I remember watching Clapton and Knopfler sort of dueling it out in their remarkably different styles. Um, in some ways, I thought Knopfler got the better of it. But, you know, they both they both are just like, incredible musicians. That obviously. sounds like an uh, incredible time. Like uh, the Blues Brothers. You're a big fan of the, the movie The Blues Brothers, too? Uh, all the... Oh, absolutely. I've watched that over and over. That's another one that I could probably almost quote you chapter and verse of but uh, I'll, I'll tell you my connection to the blues brothers the way the reason it's near and dear to my heart when i came out in 79 from the east coast to go to the university of washington i landed in a fraternity that fraternity was delta ta delta the delta ta delta boys were quick to inform me that the movie animal house that had just come out in 78 and was then popular very popular was based on that the animal house was a Delt house. And in fact, if you watch that movie, you'll see that they refer to them as the Delts. Well, we were Delts, so we're like, we're the animal house. We're going to party as hard as that house. So we kind of tried to model ourselves to some extent on that movie. Did you wear togas? We had the stoners, we had the jocks, we had the eggheads, we had some pretty girls, we threw some mean parties. But I was just learning to play my guitar, so I couldn't really entertain quite yet. You know what I mean? Wow. That's really, I didn't realize that yet, that you were in the, the, the real animal house. Explains a lot. <laughs> well, we, we tried to get as crazy as any of the other houses. We would go up on the roof and shoot water balloons at other frats, as, as everybody did. it. Everybody had a funnel later on their roof of their house. We would shoot water balloons all over the U District. I think, I think we had to stop doing that when somebody got hit in the head or hit in the eye or something like that. But uh, crazy, it's just crazy, crazy, mad fun partying that sometimes got a little too out of control but hey we were 18 or 19 what what can i say wow so we're down to our last uh, few minutes so uh, any shout outs uh, um yeah, like who have i not shouted out i want to shout out to all the members of all my five of all my five bands some of my drummers just a smattering of the drummers that i work with uh kevin sibley dean holmes Doug McNeely, come to mind. Uh, Chris McCone, another phenomenal drummer. Malcolm Monaghan. Some of my bass players that I work with. Chris Heidel, amazing bass player. Barry Lober. Some of the other guitar players, again, that I work with. Kenny Wood, principally, comes to mind. Bobby Randolph comes to mind. Just some great, silky, smooth players I have the opportunity to work with. Uh, I've mentioned some of the girl singers, particularly Renee Perez, who is the love of my life. And my secretary assistant singer in Sub Vinyl Jukebox, One Size Fits All. She does absolutely everything. She is amazing. And she wasn't really singing so much on stage until she got with me three, four years ago. So uh, I have been able to kind of put her on stage and do some things with her. And she's teaching me some things, too, as, as it will happen in a lifelong journey. Oh, so, oh learning yeah, new stuff every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So biggest shout out to Renee. And then uh, shout out to Sam and Princess again in Blue Avenue. Uh, all those other players I mentioned, all the club owners that have, that have helped me. I'm going to shout out to Craig Beerman, who uh, is a promoter. He's a biker. He is in with the biker organization. I don't know whether it's Amigos, Banditos, what club we're talking about. I don't care. He's in with the bikers, and he's putting me on stage with the Hell's Bells on August 19th this summer down south at a party called beer man's barbecue so huge shout out to craig arrowwood first and foremost promoter for me always excellent uh we should go out with another blue avenue song i'm thinking stay uh, would that be uh, all right hey that sounds good to me boss and uh before Let's we go uh i gotta mention the viva ent talk radio rock pop and soul group on facebook over 1350 me- uh, members and big fans of music 
Uh, also, Devin Chrysler Studios on YouTube, 1,100 subscribers and over 1,400 videos and growing by the day. So uh, thank you for listening to Viva ENT. Uh, Howard, we're going to have to bring you back on sometime, talk more, and maybe bring your I son on too. Any time. It's been, it's been a real pleasure, and I just uh, appreciate you very much. And uh, yeah, I'll see you out of the show one of these weekends, buddy. Yep, definitely. Well, uh, take care, and uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Thank you so much. So please stay